uh, seems to harken back to your love of the band Queen. Mm -hmm. And a few years ago, you told me a wonderful story about your first meeting with Brian May of Queen. Do you remember that story? Yep. Uh, I can give it to you in detail. <laughs> <laughs> Three years ago, we just finished the Truth album. Brian May had released a, his second solo album, and I remember him touring quite a bit for his first solo album. And after listening to this one, I thought, maybe Brian, just I, I don't know, out of a whim, from my, my respect and love for the Queen music, I thought Brian might actually someday contemplate actually having a front man. Uh, maybe thinking he'd want somebody to front the band and he could actually play guitar and sing as opposed to fronting the band and singing, having to be stuck behind the mic the whole night. So on that whim, I just, I decided to compile some material that was Queen oriented, including the Queen covers I'd done on the Tribute album, etc. And then my next step was to try to find someone that could get it to him since I'd never met anybody or, or anybody within his camp. Uh, while I was looking for a way to get the material to Brian, I ran across a, a, a recent posting that said that Queen were considerate, finally considering doing a reunion. They're, they were possibly looking for a singer, or they might be looking for a singer, or they might just go on it on their own, the three of them. And I didn't know how true or how recent the rumors were, but the actual posting was not even a month old. So I figured, geez, I hear I'm trying to send stuff to Brian, I should be sending some stuff possibility to see if they might be interested in checking me out. I mean, I have my own little legion of fans and followers from the stuff that I've done, but nowhere near the uh, household name that I would think I would need to even be considered for, for a band like Queen. So it was as shot in the dark uh, getting this stuff to Brian as it was getting my demo to Ingve back in 1984. Uh, I just, my persistence and just my my personal ambitious self just decided, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I finally hesitantly got the, the fan club organization to get my material over to Brian. After they reviewed it, they absolutely loved it. They were convinced that Brian needs to hear this immediately. And luckily, I, I, I got through to them because it was through them that it got it to Brian, in which I got a nice handwritten letter, politely written from Brian, and thanking me for the material and saying he heard of me through the grapevine, through the years, my years with Ingvay, etc. Saying he'd love to work with me in the future, blah, blah, blah. Just, you know, very polite letter. And I thought it was even just nice enough for him to take the time to write to me. Shortly after that, I was told that they were doing, the fan club were holding a, an annual Freddie Mercury birthday party that they all get together and they, they do like a huge party of like over a thousand people in his tribute. And at this particular, particular show, they got uh, a band called the SAS Band, which is Spike Edney, he's the keyboard player that was on tour with Queen towards the latter part of the years when they were still touring. Uh, he's also the keyboard player for Brian May's solo band. A lot of Queen-oriented involved projects. He's, he's got a band called the Spikes All-Star Band, the SAS Band, which also feature members of Brian May's touring lineup, Neil Murray on bass, um, um, Jamie Moses on guitar, who's played with a number of huge stars in Europe. And he assembles these people with a bunch of different singers, a bunch of different people that come up and do just all cover songs, but really cool versions of cover songs. Kind of like what the Boogie Nights did in the disco music, these guys do too, these cover tunes. And that particular night they were performing and Brian was to was slated to come up and do a few numbers with them as well. I got wind of that uh, through the fan club and they said if you could make your way over we, we could arrange for you to actually go up and stay with Brian. And to me that was that was uh, probably more of a dream come true than anything that's happened to me in my musical career. Even just the opportunity to be on the same to share the same stage with Brian May, or any member of Queen for that matter was uh, such a thrill for me that I took the opportunity to make my way to London for it. I was still in the Boogie Nights at the time, so I was doing two nights here in Vegas. Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday night, performed until like 3.30 in the morning. By 5.30 in the morning, I was at the airport going back to LAX. By 7.30 in the morning, I was on a flight from LAX to London. I landed, I, I went and got showered, and within hours of taking a shower I was on a two hour train up to Reading, which was uh, up north, and arrived and with barely any sleep behind me, just complete adrenaline, was introduced to Brian and went backstage, worked up the songs that we were going to do with no rehearsals, we went up there and winged it, it was great. And now we fast forward three years later, I've done 
a few things in and with, with throughout the uh, fan club. They do a Queen convention every year where they have Queen tribute bands or bands doing Queen music, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I've involved myself with that in joining them on stage and doing certain things. And I've gotten quite a, a little respect going there with a lot of the Queen fans. They know my love for the band. They, I share the same respect and the same love for the music. And they, they see that transpiring the way I perform it on stage to the point where they're like, my God, what a great idea, collaboration, someday you working with the band. I mean, that would be a dream come true for me. Um, we, we fast forward to October this year, 2002, where Queen were, were getting their star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. They were coming to LA to, um, to be you know, presented with this. And as well, they, they slated a, uh, an after gig performance, like a party type of thing and asked that I come up and join for a few songs at that. So I guess my persistence in three years ago getting myself to Brian has paid off in the sense that now I'm part of that little clique of, you know, where they were just my absolute idols. Now I can actually share an email or a phone call with Brian May and, you know, and, and go out to dinner with Roger and it's just it's a dream come true for me. Probably one of my biggest musical memories and experiences in my entire life.